What is happening guys? Cowboy here and welcome back to the Dark Souls Remastered walkthrough. So now that we're in the depths, the first thing I want to do, uh, since this episode is titled The Depths, is get us back to where we came from so that uh, anybody that is just tuning into The Depths, as is bound to happen, will know how to get over. So here's the bonfire, once again, we came from that way. And you can see there's a bunch of dudes up top, so we're just going to sprint on through. You can kill these guys if you want, but in general, they're kind of a pain in the ass to kill. Uh, if you have a fire weapon or alternatively fire bombs, that's a little bit easier. But as you can see, you know, they're not hard, it's just they take a beating. You now, that guy was six swings and he's finally dead, whereas a fire bomb makes pretty short work of them. So, if you really want to farm these things, I would suggest getting some fire bombs. Uh, but anyway. From here, we are going to turn down this route. And then turn through here. Right up top is a trap, so let's let the thing give you a loving hug. It'll lose a little bit of health, but it's nothing too serious. And we got the soul item. So just for the sake of keeping everything uh, concise, I'm sure I, I'm calling it right now. And if this is the case, please do comment and let me know. But I'm going to bet people are going to tune in that haven't been following attention. So uh, this is the room that we dropped in previously that have all the hollows, basically right near the entrance to the depths. Once again, for those that are just entering the depths, you come on down from up there, after you come on down, go over this way, break the boxes, drop on down, you'll kill the giant rat that would have spawned after the giant rat, drop on down, make sure to grab the key that is right there on that corpse, stay very tight to the left so that you do not fall down that hole, if you fall down, you're basically screwed. I'll be covering how to get out of that area in this episode, actually. And then after we slide down, we make that quick right turn, run all the way up here, go up the ladder, break the boxes, go up the stairs, make a quick left, open the door, and then we're at the bonfire. So, that didn't take too long, did it? About three minutes. Excellent. All right. So, from the bonfire, let's actually get this episode started off correctly. Um, first thing we're going to do, of course, is kill this torch hollow. We already ran through and got that soul item, so we're not going to worry about that. Instead, we're going to head back down. Um, so, instead of taking the ladder that was right here, instead we're going to go straight for the time being. Let's see, we have a bunch of rats. Now, be a little bit careful with the rats, because the rats can poison you. Takes about two attacks in your poison, so just keep that in mind. Uh, it's good to have moss on. And we got the Great Axe. Uh, additionally, these guys are really good if you need to farm up humanity. Uh, you'll encounter these little blob things. They don't do anything, but you can go ahead and pop them if you want. Anyway, we're going to take this left path. Kill the rat that pops out of the crate. Kill this rat. Like he dropped, drop him, poop him, kill these rats. Yeah, it's just lots of rats, right? And that's actually the area where we fought big rat before. So moving on from here, we're going to go down this causeway for a soul item. And then we're going to flip around the corner, and we got ourselves a fog wall. So the first thing we want to do is kill this Chancellor that's right in front of us. There he is. Oh no! He already buffed it. Alright, well since he buffed the rats, instead focus on the rats. Uh, as mentioned back at the Parish, the Chancellor can buff enemies. So if the Chancellor... I think they actually moved his position, he's usually not all the way down here. Uh, since he went ahead and buffed the rats already, we're going to focus on taking them out. The way to do this, of course, is just pulling them with throwing knives. 
That way you are safely away from the Chancellor's spells. You can lure the rats in, take them out one at a time, and then go take out the Chancellor. The biggest thing is, you know, you don't want to just run in because the uh, buffed rats will do quite a bit of damage. You can kind of see how it has like an aura around it right now, and that's the Chancellor's buff. Uh, over here to the left, there's going to be an ambush with two rats and crates. Large Titanite around the corner. There used to be an ambush. Oh, yeah, there it is. Sneaky little buggers. Anyway, we're going to go back and into the causeways here. Now, this part can be a little disorienting, so first thing we're going to do is take a left. Let's see, we have a rat right there. That's going to run, and you'll notice that it's kind of where it's hanging right there. There's actually a drop down, so be very careful. If you chase that rat, you'll fall right down there. But instead, we're going to take the right into here, and we're going to take the left, and we're going to go straight to get this soul light. Um, from there, we're going to make another right. And ta-da! This is where we fought that giant rat from before. Uh, so there's nothing else down there right now. So instead, we're going to run over this way, and we're going to take the water slide back down. This time, once again, stay all the way to the left. And we're going to take these guys, and then go talk to our good buddy, Dom Hall. Not worth dealing with them. They're annoying, they're slow. Anyway, so come over here, talk to Damwa, go through his stuff. Uh, you can pick up gold pine resin if you don't have any from him. Additionally, he sells some crystal stuff. Uh, the crystal gear, in general, it has higher damage than its regular gear counterparts, but you can't repair them whatsoever. So, basically, they hit hard, but eventually they're going to break, and because of that, they're not really worth it, in my opinion. Um, aside from that, he also sells arrows, and then he sells his own gear. Now, the important thing about Dom Hall is that Dom Hall is going to sell various unique boss armors after you defeat those bosses. So, because of that, you definitely want to come by and talk to this guy. Um, we're going to run through his whole dialogue, make sure you completely exhaust it, and then... Uh, after a couple bosses, he's going to move on over to Firelink Shrine. Uh, basically, after you've rung both Bells of Awakening in particular. So we rang one with the Gargoyles, we'll ring one a little bit later. After that, he'll be a Firelink. We can buy all of our boss armors from him. Uh, this door is going to be what takes us down to Blight Town. We're not going to be doing that right now. Uh, so instead... Oh yeah, also, he sells the Bottomless Box, if you didn't pick it up previously. Also worth... Uh, noting that. Uh, so, leaving Dom Hall, this turn to the left right now, that'll lead us to the boss for this area. We're not going to do that just yet. Instead, we're going to go back towards where the waterfall was at, and we're going to make a right turn. There's going to be a couple of rats right here, so just be ready. These guys are the reason you don't want to fall down the waterfall. If you see that little bar building up on my screen, uh, that is petrifying. And what it does is it'll eventually completely turn your character into stone. It'll also curse you, um, which reduces your maximum HP by half. So hang on right here for a second. Here comes Kirk, our first NPC invader. Easiest ways to just parry him. Uh, alternatively, you can do the circle around and backstab technique. Uh, 
you will only get invaded if you are human. Easiest way to tell is if you're uh, up in the top left, you're humanity. If that is white and colored, you're human. If it's not, you're not. Uh, but obviously, by killing him, we can go ahead and get the barbed longsword and his shield. Uh, at this point, we're going to proceed forward and go up these stairs. Go through this little archway for another soul item. We have some more basilisks to kill. So one of the good things to do with basilisks is kind of just run up and get them fast. Get in, hit them, do whatever you can. You don't want to be stuck in their mist, whatever you do. Uh, and actually, before I think, I want to say that Kirk isn't a guaranteed drop on both of those. I know you get the longsword, but I think the shield may be a chance. Uh, I know you fight him a couple times throughout the game. Uh, if I remember correctly, as you kill him, you'll eventually get everything. But I don't believe they're both guaranteed drops initially. Uh, so anyway, after those two basilisks, we got one over there and then more this way. Um, we're gonna get this guy over. Don't want to fight him in the limited space. Watch out for that one. Remember, just do not stay in that mist. And there's a gap right here, so this is a little bit tricky. Got up. So you don't have a lot of space to run. Go ahead and do that to get the humanity. Next, we're gonna actually drop down the hole. Now, when we drop down. Got too close for comfort. I'll drop down the hole, follow it around. See how there's a bunch of basilisks down here, so. And uh, certainly get kind of surrounded by those guys. But go over here, grab the Ring of the Evil Eye. A decent ring will restore HP with every enemy that you kill. Not a huge amount of HP, but if you're relatively good about keeping your health up. Um, like right now, like two or three enemies would top me off with where my health is at, just to put it in perspective. Uh, you can also farm these guys for Eyes of Death, which are used for the Graveboard Covenant. Just something nice to know. Um, anyway, after you have grabbed the Ring of the Evil Eye, make your way back, killing all the Basilisks from behind. Grab the large soul, and then here's the stairs to exit, and we're right back here. Um, so all of those various drops that you saw earlier, they will put you down into this area in one place or another. Uh, so if you did fall down the waterfall, the easiest thing to do is just you know kind of keep in mind, take a careful look at this area, know that the stairs will lead towards the exit. You see the gate. You want to proceed with the gate on your left, circle around through the archway, quick right, quick left, and then go down and around, and then we're back. So it's a little bit confusing because you drop down and instinctively, you know, you're looking to go up, uh, but instead you need to like you need to drop down to make your way back up so it can definitely be a, a little bit disorienting if you do make the mistake of falling down there via the waterfall just try your best to get out uh, if you get afflicted of course this is why you should have bought a purging stone just something to keep in mind looks like somebody dropped something i didn't pick up earlier Ooh, large titan knife thank you thank you uh, so that actually drops off the slimes it's a relatively low drop rate which is why I don't recommend sitting there and fighting them too much. Uh, there's some enemies later that we can farm large titanite off of that are much more likely to drop it, but if you were dead set on upgrading your weapon to plus 10, you, know, you can kill these guys, but as you've seen, I've killed quite a few and I've only had one drop so far, so just something to keep in mind. Um, before we go to the boss, uh, which we are going to be proceeding to the boss from here, as always, now is a good time to go ahead and spend souls if you want to spend them. So let's go ahead and do that. Once again, back to the bonfire. Quick and easy. Up the stairs, take the ladder around the corner, and you're there. Uh, as always, if you want to use up soul items, 
now's the time to do it. And honestly, you don't have to use soul items every time you're about to level up. Uh, in fact, it's kind of nice to save some so that... that a max. Uh, so that if, you know, you suddenly find that you are in need of a bunch of souls, you know, souls on demand, I'm comfortable enough knowing we're, you know, how to proceed through everything and that every time I level, I'm going to burn these just to get the uh, easy XP. Right. And let me check out something real fast. I need for you 18 decks. Alright, I think it's... Mm, uh, in terms of continuing to level up, once you have your VIT to 30, that's one of the main soft caps. You can see I have 1,320 HP between having that to 30 and having the uh, Ring of Favor and Protection. So that's a hefty amount of health. And taking Endurance up to 40 is also a priority, but at this point I want to work on getting my decks up uh, and starting to meet the requirements for the sword. Uh, as a reminder, if you reach the, some of the requirements you can get halfway. So just for an example here, once again, if we take 32, divide that by 1.5 is 21.3. So basically with 22 strength, I will be able to, uh, to two hand that sword and use it. So I'm going to make my way towards 22 strength and 18 decks so I can use the Black Knight Greatsword. Anyway, let's go down and take out a boss. Uh, so this next boss, is the Gaping Dragon. Um, as always, before a boss fight, it's good to be human. Um, just about every boss fight, if there's not an NPC summon, oop, went the wrong way. You could just go ahead and kill them, easy humanity. Um, a lot of boss fights, there are NPC summons. For those that there aren't NPC summons, you can usually find a player who is willing to put down a summon sign and help you on out. Just something to keep in mind. This one in particular, there are two NPCs that you can summon. Um, one, if you've been following this guide, as we've already killed Baltric, because he is a bastard with a great ring. But anyway, we're going to take this path to the boss, go up the stairs, take a quick right, follow this around until we have a set of stairs that we can go down. On this level, uh, we will find one summon sign here for Solaire. And right over here, the heavy crossbow and heavy bolts. Um, there's also a second summon sign. I want to say it's right here, uh, but that's the one for Lawtrick if you didn't kill him. But, you know, honestly, as much as I like his armor, I like Ring of Favor and Protection more. Uh, so this boss is somewhat weak to uh, lightning. In particular, he has a little itty bitty head, and hitting the head will take 50% extra damage. You can cut off this boss's tail for a weapon. Some primary things to look out for, he does a big belly flop type attack that can be uh, fairly dangerous. He has a tail swipe, and he can puke acid. Uh, the general strategy here is going to be to cut off the tail and then stick on his back legs. And aside from that, it's really not that bad, uh, especially if you manage to stick right behind him. If you are playing a ranged or caster class, there is a spot that's somewhat safe that I'll show you in just a moment. But for now, let's enjoy the cutscene. This is always a good reveal. You're sitting here and you're like, oh look! Looks like a friendly little alligator. How nice! And just kidding. He's not a friendly alligator. He is a massive vagina monster. If you're wondering why I'm calling the vagina monster, wait till this thing stands up on its hind legs. You will never look at a vagina the same way again. Sorry for bringing that for all. So anyway, um, if you are a caster, right back here is a semi-safe spot. Uh, he has a few attacks that can get past these pillars and hit you, but for the most part, it's actually... Uh, pretty chill to just kind of sit back here and not worry about it. That did not work out. Anyway, as I mentioned, first thing we're going to do is go and cut off the tail, because I want the weapon. Ooh, man. Tail swipe coming in hard. Uh, another thing I should probably mention, uh, anytime you do summon help for a boss, 
it will make the boss harder. They'll have more health. So it'll take you longer to kill. Something to keep in mind. Uh, if you're confident in your abilities, it's always better to go in solo because of that reason. Dragon King Great Axe. Thank you for that. So if you can bait him in, this is where you could... See how I got 363 hitting his head right there? Whereas, uh, opposed to that, hitting him like right here in the body, I'm only seeing 147. So that's what I was talking about when I said you'll get bonus damage for hitting the head. Um, the best way to do that is going to be just kind of baiting him in. You know, here he goes up for his belly flop. I guess it's more of a flip, but you know, as long as you, uh, you're just kind of aware of that. You can see there's plenty of room to move around in this fight. Uh, after he does his chest slam, that's going to be the best time to get in there and damage the head. This is one of the nice things about having Solaire along, is he's focused on Solaire instead of me. Uh, but I don't want Solaire to die. Because, you know, he's a bro. There's the acid spit. Let's see, it'll tick you for little bits of damage. If you run all the way over there, you can get knocked off. I'm going to go ahead and chant this up. No, Solaire. Well, that's okay. Even if Solaire dies, you can still summon him later. Not the end of the world. Even though our summon has died, the boss will still have that increased health, so just keep that in mind. Drag along with his legs. It's probably be the hardest boss fight up until now. Not necessarily because it's a difficult boss. Uh, mainly just because of the rather large health pool this thing has. Okay, dragon down. And we got the Blight Town key. So, Homeward Bone, uh, Leather Set, I just picked that up off this corpse. And as he has given us a bone to use, I'd highly suggest just boning on out. Going back to the bonfire, and then spending those souls. Alright, 18. <laughs> Done. Uh, so from here, we're going to be going back down to where Dom Hall was at, and using that door that was next to him to head on down into Blighttown. So make sure to stay tuned, and we'll catch you guys with Blighttown in the next episode.